Hi, I'm Jeff Ray, your host for Economic Outlook. We're glad you've joined us. If you're a regular viewer, welcome back. If you're new, we hope you make plans to join us each week as we bring you stories about the people and the companies and the communities driving economic growth in our region. They enroll over 5,000 students annually and offer degree programs in a wide variety of fields. Earlier this year, they welcomed a new chancellor to campus. We'll sit down with Indiana University South Bend Chancellor Susan Elrod for a closer look at campus and the discussion about the important role colleges and universities play in communities coming up on Economic Outlook. Higher education institutions play a critical role in preparing students for the jobs of today and tomorrow. One of those important institutions is IUSB. In July, Susan Elrod joined the university as its sixth chancellor. Elrod has brought a strong background working in higher education institutions across the country and has really hit the ground running here in South Bend. To talk about the state of higher education and for a closer look at what's happening at Indiana University South Bend, please join me in welcoming Chancellor Susan Elrod. Susan, thanks for being here today. Really appreciate it. Glad to be here. Yeah, we've enjoyed uh, getting to know you a little bit mm -hmm. over the last uh, couple months, and we mm -hmm. thought maybe uh, some of our viewers who haven't had a chance to get mm -hmm. to know you yet, this would be a great chance to, to get to know you, talk a little bit about higher education and specifically what's happening at, at IUSB. So so maybe just for, uh, for background's sake, talk to us a little bit about your experience uh, before IUSB. Well, thanks again for having me uh, here today. I'm happy always to talk about higher education and uh, IU South Bend. I have spent my career at public comprehensive universities like IU South Bend as a faculty member, uh, doing research with students. I'm a scientist by training, spent some time in the biotechnology industry, so really appreciate that real world connection to what we do in higher education. So I served then in leadership positions, uh, mostly out in California in the California State University system and then recently was serving as the Chief Academic Officer at University of Wisconsin-Whitewater in the UW system. So yes, I have experience with snow. Everybody right. asks me that question, <laughs> being It'll a be Californian. Ready for the winter. Yes. <clears throat> so um, have, have, a, have a lot of experience on the ground uh, at the uh, campus level. I've also spent time doing national work in Washington, D.C for the Association of American Colleges and University, specifically working on improving access and persistence of students in STEM higher education programs. So I've worked with colleges and universities around the country, from community colleges to minority serving institutions to research universities to institutions like IU South Bend. And I think it's an exciting time in higher education. And my passion is really the role of public higher ed in communities and transforming people's lives and the lives of those around them. So happy happy to be here to talk more about that. Great, sounds good. So, so maybe th um, think back to um, late spring or, and, and so what mm -hmm. attracts you to mm -hmm. the Indiana University system and to, South, to the South Bend campus in particular? Well, one of the things that is so exciting to me about the opportunity here is how embedded IU South Bend is in the community, what a role it plays you know, it is IU here in this region and as one of the regional campuses of IU. And so it provides opportunities for anybody in this region to get an advanced post-secondary degree. We have baccalaureate programs, over 100 of them. We have 20 master's degree programs and we're growing our graduate programs to dovetail with industrial needs, uh, community needs, uh, fitting in with uh, how we can help the region advance not only uh, business and industry, but our community organizations, social, health care, uh, all of the things that make this place so great. I, I love, one thing I love about the Midwest is its industrious nature. You know, things are built here, things are created here, they're manufactured here, and that is exciting to me, uh, especially as a scientist. I, I like to know how things work. I like to see them come together. And so this region in particular of the Midwest has those strong roots and I think those are just great opportunities for a university like IU South Bend to continue to partner to help improve the economic well-being and the social well-being of the region. Great, no, it sounds good and we'll get into it a little bit. So, so let, let's uh, maybe back up for a second mm -hmm. and talk higher ed in general, mm -hmm. public institutions ar around the country, mm -hmm. kind of the, 
the state of it. My guess is um, competition is as fierce as it's ever been. There's mm -hmm. there's so much conversation about uh, you know kind of the need and the important role they play, and and mm -hmm. how do we make sure um, young people or, or people of all ages have the right. skills they need for the jobs of today. So so mm -hmm. any any trends, things that are happening mm -hmm. in the generally across the country that that we should be more aware of. Mm -hmm. Well, I think public institutions in particular are providing that access point for a broad spectrum of people in the communities where they're situated. And so uh, students in the region have that choice, but with online programs, they have even more choice. So you're right, competition is stiff. But what we do know is that as human beings, we're social, we're, we're social organisms. Sorry, I'm a biologist. Yeah. <laughs> We're social beings and, and people like to come together. And so one thing I hear at IU South Bend all the time is we just love the camaraderie. We love the interactions. We love the small class sizes. So uh, we can we can compete uh, with each other on program levels, but, but where we know it makes a difference in people's lives is when there's actual human contact and interaction and people feel like they belong somewhere. So uh, that's, that's one thing that we're really focusing on at the university. I think everywhere people are worried about what some are calling the demographic cliff. So the decreasing number of high school students that are in our high schools. Um, so we're looking really hard, and I know every institution of higher education is doing this, looking really hard at how can we just get more of the students who are there thinking about college, prepared for college, and then entering college in places that make sense for them to help them pursue their passions and achieve their dreams. So I would say, you know, choice is a, is a big issue these days, but uh, reaching more students to help them understand how to go to college, how to get prepared for college is a big challenge for all of us as well. In the, um, maybe on the debate stages in mm -hmm. politics, there's a lot of discussion today about um, higher ed, the cost mm -hmm. of higher ed, student debt, mm -hmm. student loans. Um, how are colleges mm -hmm. thinking about it? You, you sort of have this challenge yeah. of um, w w to provide a, a high quality education. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it, there's some expense related mm -hmm. to that, but we also need to keep this affordable. Talk mm -hmm. about um, mm -hmm. the Indiana system in particular mm -hmm. and its ability to, to, to help control those costs mm -hmm. and provide that affordable mm -hmm. opportunity. Mm -hmm. Well, IU South Bend is a great deal, just about $7,000 a year for tuition. Uh, and, and so that doesn't even count all the financial aid. Uh, the vast majority of our students receive federal, state, and even local aid. So we have strong financial aid offices that help work with students to create a financial aid plan that will help them manage the costs of higher education. We work really hard to keep those costs down, but we also work really hard also to get scholarships in place. We have lots of donors and alumni and friends of the university who are providing needed scholarships to students and those are always helpful. Uh, they add that extra boost that a student might need. Uh, we're also helping students with a food pantry and an emergency fund to help them with those sometimes unplanned emergencies. They need new tires for their car or they're kind of on the financial edge and are not really always sure where their next meal is going to come from. So the support we're providing goes beyond scholarships and financial aid and helping students really navigate the system and their degree program with good advising, but also help with the rest of their lives uh, in appropriate ways to help them be successful and focused on their education. Great. That one of the other maybe national debates a little bit is about you know sort of completion, your ability to sort of move them mm -hmm. uh, through the system. As you mentioned, they, these work and real mm -hmm. life and stuff sometimes get in the way. How, yeah. how are how are colleges generally trying to mm -hmm. help on on that side as well? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the first step is really understanding that students are human beings that sometimes have lives that may cause them to what we call stop out. So we hope nobody ever just drops out. Um, they just might stop for a while and we hear lots of stories of students who started, uh, dropped out or stopped out um, because life happened, but then they come back to us. And so we have lots of programs that allow students to re-enter whenever they're ready. We're, we have open arms, lots of programs, uh, our social work programs, education programs, our health sciences programs, even business programs are welcoming to students whenever they come back. About 20% of our student population at IU South Bend are students who are 25 and older, so we would consider them sort of adult, non-traditional students. 
uh, we're going to be looking at more programs to welcome more of them back to our university with additional flexible programming and programs that are geared toward helping them complete that degree and so they can move on in their careers or choose a new career. A lot of people come back and say, you know what, I always wanted to do this and I didn't start with that and I've been doing the, this other work for a while. I really wanted to get that degree in nursing. So they come back and are able to complete their degrees with us. And that's an important population for us and one that we're spending time focusing on figuring out how to serve even better than we do now. Great. Let, let's maybe shift uh, to speci some specific conversations about students in, in particular. So just help us understand a little bit about where your students come from, mm -hmm. some of the uh, demographic, you know, how, how mm -hmm. many mm -hmm. graduate, undergraduate, where they come from, mm -hmm. that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Well, we have about 5,000 students now, about 4,500 are undergraduates. So that means about 500 are graduate students and that population is growing. 52% of our students come from St. Joseph County, 22% Elkhart County. So really our students are from here. Um, and we also know when they graduate, 65% of them stay here. We have uh, around the world about 35,000 IU South Bend alumni. So if you do the math and you do the 65%, about 22,000 are still here in the region. So students are from here, they stay here, and we're excited about that. About 28% of our students are underrepresented minorities and our fastest growing population is our Hispanic population. We are at about 13% right now overall and our incoming freshman class this year was almost 23% Hispanic. And so we are on, on our way to becoming a Hispanic serving institution very soon and that means we would have at least 25% of our overall population. We already retain those students at or above average so that population of students does really well at IU South Bend. We have lots of programs and supports and uh, majors we know that they're interested in studying and lots of very successful alumni already out in the world uh, doing great things. Great. Well, we're going to actually take a quick break here mm -hmm. in the, in the uh, studio. We're going to head out to campus. I've sent uh, George Lepinotis, my co-host, out to campus for an inside look at what's happening there. George, let me toss it to you. Thanks, Jeff. I'm on the campus of IU South Bend. I'm joined today by Dean Colby of the Business School. Dean, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about yourself and how it came to be that you're here at IUSB running the Business School. Well, I've been here for three years. And as of January, I'll be here three years. And one of the things I like about business schools and being in a school like IU South Bend is a special group of students. We're ta talking about the students who are privileged that have really, really high scores and all those types of things. We're talking about regular people and a lot of first generation students of which I'm one. And that to be a, a dean of a school that does that kind of work is really, I think, a noble exercise, but also very important in our society. Now the school, mm -hmm. your business school, is named after a local business luminary, Judd Layton, mm -hmm. um, and brings about, brings the IU f brand and the IU prestige right here to South Bend and as you said is accessible to local students. Right. Now the business school tell me a little bit about your curriculum and what types of programs students can expect to major in by attending the school. Okay so we have a range of programs we have an accounting program and an advertising program marketing and human relation human resource management and we have other areas marketing for sure yeah. and, and health, health services management and I'm probably going to leave out a couple in that list, sure. but they're good. And we also have an important thing is an analytics major and, and a minor in analytics. And we're going to talk about the analytics in a second. Okay. And, and, and that is, that's one of your new technology majors that yeah. really you and the staff have identified as the next generation of business needs that you want to prepare your students for. Uh, so in addition to the traditional degrees that we think of, marketing and advertising, students can come to IUSB and, and study this data analytics. What is that? What does that mean for someone who doesn't know what data analytics might well, be? Everything we see is, is data. You know, we're producing data in voluminous amounts, and businesses have had data in voluminous amounts for a long time. And so the problem is that no one knows what to do with it. And so the big issue is to take that data, uh, be able to interpret what it means, and make decisions about it. So there's a lot of steps in that process, including things like visualization of data, be able to put it in charts and tables and graphs that you can give to managers and help them understand what this, really, this data really means. Now we're in one of IUSB's beautiful buildings here on the campus, and right down the, down the hall from where we're standing is a new facility focused on that degree, and tell me a little bit about that 
that facility, that laboratory, and how it came to be. Yes, so it's a an data analytics lab, and we're gonna teach courses in there. We're going to use it as a lab space for students to go and do their homework, to work with a professor outside of class, and just to work with each other in, in that space. And we really are using it as an indicator to students that we want you to understand data and be able to use data to make decisions. And so we're changing our courses. We're making sure that students are getting the analytical skills, but they're also taking the results they get from the data analysis processes and then using that to make decisions. So it's taking it to the next step because a lot of times we would just get the data analysis and not get to the answer problem. So when this particular lab, when students are in the lab, they will, you said before we went on camera, they'll be learning from each other, not mm -hmm. just from your staff. Right. And some of that is how the lab is set up. Is your hope to graduate students uh, in what year for, for, for that data analytics degree? Well, probably by 2021, the students will be improved in terms of their data analysis skills, and just because we have this lab. Uh, and I think it's gonna continue from this time forward. Thank you, Dean. Thank you for being with us today. Thanks for showing us around. Thanks for showing us the great lab and good Thank luck you. with the work. Okay. Jeff, back to you in the studio where you're gonna talk a lot more about IUSB and other local educational opportunities that young students might have to gain a leg up on the market. George, thank you. Appreciate the inside look. And Chancellor, thanks for letting us uh, go out to campus and uh, see what's anytime, going on there. So, anytime. Uh, some great stuff happening out there. And the campus has changed so much uh, over the years. It, it, it really neat to see. So uh, on the show here, we talk uh, mostly jobs and economy and, mm -hmm. and kind of, uh, and, and we talk a lot about the workforce in particular. You um, teased at the beginning, or not teased, but talked mm -hmm. a little bit about the, you know, the important role that Indiana University South Bend plays in developing the local mm -hmm. workforce. Can you talk to us a little bit about just some of the, the key key degree programs mm -hmm. that, that, that then are sort of um, uh, creating the workers that, that help mm -hmm. that local economy? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the hallmarks of a bachelor's degree education in general is the general education, the critical thinking skills, the quantitative reasoning, the communication, the writing, the reading, the teamwork, all of those kinds of basic foundational skills. And so, to me, those are job preparation skills. Employers want people who can communicate, who can write, who can work with others, who can think critically. So as a foundational set of skills, all of our graduates leave our institution with those skills. Then they also leave, of course, with their upper division coursework in business, the health sciences. We have a great school of, t of education, uh, in fact, just recently, announced a federal grant over $5 million to help provide accelerated master's degree residency programs for teachers in our South Bend schools. So very excited about that partnership with the South Bend School Corporation. I, and I think I want to maybe touch on that for a quick uh, second because maybe a great example of, of giving um, students the education they need to prepare them for life, mm -hmm. but also helping to solve a real uh, community need. So it, mm -hmm. it, it sort of speaks to the maybe the role the university plays um, one of educating students, but two mm -hmm. of influencing the community as well? Absolutely, our role as the place that prepares teachers, we have great relationships with all the schools in our region and are very excited about this new opportunity to really deepen those partnerships. The emphasis in this grant is also STEM teacher preparation, which we know is always a need in the community and as a scientist and someone who's done some STEM education work nationally, I, I appreciate that. So I think that role that we play is is paramount and uh, we've been talking about more programs to get kids to campus earlier before they're making a college decision getting the teachers with them as well so really deepening the interactions between us as the public institution in the region and our local schools great so uh, when we look at job reports and we see where most of the growth has happened in, in recent years um, healthcare is one of those in particular mm -hmm. the work you're doing in the health science uh, seems to have really grown in the last couple mm -hmm. years touch on the, the the things you're doing to prepare folks mm -hmm. for careers in that mm -hmm. field well we're very excited about all of our programs in the health sciences and that is where our enrollment is really growing at the undergraduate as well as the graduate level so I would say that we're we're focusing a little bit more on graduate level programs the field of, uh, all kinds of fields in the health sciences are moving toward more and more higher degree qualifications for people working in those fields. And so we're working to create those programs to respond 
and help industry, help hospitals, local health care providers be able to hire the people who have the qualifications that they seek. We have a new speech language pathology graduate program that's just been approved that we're launching. And that program and some others are also headquartered in our center out in Elkhart County. So we're also very excited to have a footprint uh, in our neighboring county uh, of Elkhart and excited about the programs that we'll be able to be offering there. So we're, we're uh, partnering with uh, health, health systems locally and, and folks in the region to be mindful of ways that we can build programs that are responsive to what the healthcare industry needs. And our college is already very strong with great partnerships and we look forward to continued growth in those programs. Great, you touched on the, this Elkhart campus. Elkhart's mm -hmm. an important part of our viewing area mm -hmm. as well, so we're thrilled that, to, to, to mention that. So uh, talk about maybe some of the programs that you offer on that campus over there. Well, right now its focus is, is health science mm -hmm. and I know that there are programs that we could be offering out there and so I'm interested in learning more from the Elkhart community about what they think would be useful to them uh, just 40 miles away, mm -hmm. it seems, you know, like it's close, but it's, but it's, uh, we're happy to have a place there where we can offer programs for the community. I mean, it could be uh, degree completion programs for people working in the industry there. It could be entry level programs for students who are trying to get a, a head start on their four year degrees, partnerships with local schools, all kinds of things are possible out there. And I'm looking forward to exploring with the community what might be uh, possible out there. Great, I, I think what I love hearing, the nimbleness, if you will, employers yes. uh, as careers are changing, I mm -hmm. often think of uh, um, how clear your crystal ball is, right? You sort of have to look into the future mm -hmm. and anticipate what the future needs of employers mm -hmm. are, as well as to today's needs and, and try to mm -hmm. try to meet that. So, so uh, talk just for a second mm -hmm. about that nimbleness and, mm -hmm. and how you're able to, to, to balance that. Well, I think this is where partnerships with industry and local um, organizations of all kinds is really important. Uh, all of our coll colleges and schools have advisory boards with industry members on them to help us stay tuned. Uh, we're, we're able to create upper division courses quickly. We can hire adjunct faculty. Many of our programs bring in experts and real world practitioners to teach. Uh, we have a criminal justice program, for example, that takes advantage of people in the community. We also want to make sure that our students have internship opportunities so they can get out from the classroom, from the theory and the research, and actually see what goes on in the real world. So we are always looking for more internship opportunities for our students to connect them to what is actually happening in the real world. Great, I, and I, I think that practical experience is, is so important. I'm, here, I'm thrilled to hear the, that piece of it going. Um, let's talk, um, we talked uh, higher ed, or I'm, I'm sorry, we talked uh, healthcare, we talked um, education. You mm -hmm. mentioned business mm -hmm. um, to, to maybe touch on sort of that program and what happens with that. Well, we have marketing, accounting, finance, all of the classic economics, all of those great uh, programs that you would think a business school should have. and. We have specialists who are helping students with specific business internship opportunities. And I know that our students are getting hired in the region. I just ran into someone and said, hey, I hired four of your county students just the other day. And in fact, they said, I think half of our employees are, more than half are from IU South Bend. So we know we're preparing students in ways that are useful to employers in the region. Data analytics is a new focus for us. We're launching a new data analytics facility, a classroom facility. Um, and we're very excited about that and the opportunities that it's going to provide to really help students get a leg up on that particular trend in the business world. It, it's interesting because that, that's one of those we've heard a lot in the region about in the last few years about sort of data storage and, and, and more so in the last couple of years on the analytic mm -hmm. uh, piece of this and, and really this area ripe for that kind of thing. So Absolutely. again, a, a, another great example of, of being responsive. Uh, maybe in our last couple of minutes, uh, you know, mm -hmm. you touched earlier on uh, as higher ed is changing and things like and students are taking classes online and stuff, you know, how are, are you adapting in, in, in sort of those those mm -hmm. roles too, kind of meeting students um, where they are. I mean, I, I'm with you. I like. I think the traditional mm -hmm. classroom and those interactions mm -hmm. or collisions that happen are critical. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but, but my guess is to be competitive, you have to offer other things. So, how are you uh, meeting some of those mm -hmm. needs too? Well, I think the secret really is having a variety of delivery options for students. We have more and more online courses, and more and more online degree programs. So we're we're moving in that direction. Uh, we also have lots of programs that are hybrid, where there's some component of online, but then there's some face-to-face -face time. And I think what we're doing is looking systematically at which programs 
should be more online than others, perhaps, uh, which, you know, from student demand and industry demand. So we're looking closely at how to be strategic about those kinds of operations. But in the end, we have to have face-to-face, -face, we have to have hybrid, we have to have all the options open for students. And so we're working toward making sure that we're able to provide those options for people in the community. Great, so um, just in, in our last, so mm -hmm. students who are interested in pursuing or employers who want to be better connected to interns, all that, where would mm -hmm. we send them? So for employers, intern opportunities, our career services office, iusb.edu, Google in there, uh, career services. For students, just go to the homepage, iusb.edu. You can uh, see the application and get other, other information right on that homepage. And you can also learn about the university by following me on Twitter at IUSB Chancellor. I'm a follower. And like I'm it. following you. Yep. So uh, so the website's the best. We've got a lot of things on social media. So Instagram, Facebook, uh, IU, South Bend, Twitter account. Great. And I think once you start following all those people, you, you figure out where else to go. We also have great athletic programs for students to think about if they're athletes and for people in the community to think about attending. Great, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate learning more about IUSB. Keep up your good work there, so. Thank you, Jeff. That's it for our show today. Thank you for watching. To watch this episode again or any of our past episodes, you can find Economic Outlook at WNIT.org. We also encourage you to like us on Facebook or follow me on Twitter. I'm Jeff Ray, I'll see you next week. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.